everyone. Welcome to Learning at 11th Hour. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about PLAs or Programmable Logic Array. And we're going to see how we can use PLAs to implement Boolean functions. Let's get into the video. In the previous video, I would have shown you the basics of PLAs and the types of PLAs. And we know that there are three types. The first one was PROM, where we had an AND array and OR array out of which the AND array was fixed, but the OR array was programmable. Today, we're going to look at PLAs, or Programmable Logic Array, the third one over here, where both the AND array and the OR array are going to be programmable. So let us see how we can use this to implement Boolean functions. But before we get into that, we should understand that a PLAs concept is very similar to PROM. Only that in the PROM, we will be using a decoder which will provide all the possible min terms that are there using the given inputs. But in case of PLAs, only the necessary product terms are going to come out from the AND array. And these product terms are in the next stage combined with OR arrays. So therefore, we are going to say that both the AND array and the OR array are programmable. So, for example, if I have f1 is, say, ab dash plus ac plus a dash b c dash, and say f2 is given as ac plus bc the whole dash. So say these are the two Boolean functions which we need to implement and we've been asked to do it using the PLA. So the first step that we need to do is we need to develop the PLA programming table. Now how do we do that? So in order to develop the PLA programming table, we need to enlist all the product terms, the inputs and the outputs. So the PLA programming table consists of the product terms, all the inputs, and the outputs. So over here, we know that the first product term is going to be, so let's enlist it from the expression AB dash. So we have A, B dash. So we, we can see from both of these expressions that there are three inputs, right? A, B, and C. There are two outputs. One is F1, the other one is F2. The first product term is A, B dash. Then we have A, C, A dash, B, C dash. And in the second expression, again, we have A, C and B, C. Since already A, C has been enlisted once, no need to rewrite that. So we just write out B, C. Now, how do we fill up the other two columns? So looking at the input column, here the product term has the literal A and the literal B dash. It does not have the literal C. So we are going to put a 1 under A, meaning that the lit literal A is present in the product term. We are going to put a 0 under B, meaning it is B dash. The product term has the literal B dash. And since C is not there, we are going to just put a, a dash. Similarly, 1 dash 1 would be for AC. 0, 1, 0 will be for A dash, B, C dash. And dash 1, 1 will be for BC. Now, out of these product terms, the first three belong to function F1, but not the last term. And the first term does not belong to F2, the second term does, the third term does not belong to F2, but the fourth term does. So in this manner, we are going to develop our PLA programming table. So that is our first step. Next, we are going to implement it using the logic gates, the AND array and the OR array is going to be developed now. But before that, we need to note one XOR with any variable, say X, is going to be x bar. Why is that? Because 
if we expand this XOR, what we get is 1x bar plus 0x. 0x is nothing but 0, so what remains here is x bar. Again, we should also remember that 0 XOR with any input will be given as x. How do we arrive at this? So we know that a b bar, that is 0 x bar plus a bar b, that is 1 x. So this term becomes 0 and what remains is x. So we need to remember these two things because in the final structure of our PLA, we will be ending it with an XOR. So let us now try to implement uh, this PLA programming table using the uh, AND array and the OR array. So to do that, we first need to draw the input lines and their inverted versions. So let's draw A. So this would be A bar. Similarly, we have B and B bar. C with C bar. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 product terms. So let me draw 4 lines representing each product term. First one, second one, third one, and the last one. We should remember that both the AND array and the OR array are programmable. So this is the AND array which we are going to develop now. Here if we see the first product term, we have A and B dashed programmed. So I'm going to use A and B dash in the crossed manner for this particular line. So what comes out over here is a b dash. Similarly, here we have a and c programmed. So the second product term is a c. The third term, we have all three programmed, but in this case, a dash, b and c dash. The last term we have B and C programmed. So what we get here is BC. So having said this, now we know that we have all our product terms available to us. Out of this, we are going to combine the necessary product terms using the OR gate to frame our functions. So the first output is uh, F1. So for F1, we have the first three product terms involved. This one, this one, and this one. So it's programmed in this manner. And for F2, we are going to have the second and the fourth one. That is AC and BC. So this and this, they are programmed. If you notice the expression for uh, F2, so F2 is a complemented function. So it's not simply AC plus BC the whole bar. Therefore, what we can do is we can use this uh, concept where we get the complement of a particular function when it is XORed with 1. So therefore, if this is going to be the function that I am going to implement, like I want F2 to be over here, but here I have got F2 complement because here I'm only getting AC plus BC. AC plus BC is nothing but F2 bar because F2 is AC plus BC the whole bar. So I have to invert it to get a complemented version. So I'm going to have 1 as the input 
of an XOR and F2 dash is the input of this XOR. Here I will get F2 which is going to be AC plus BC the whole bar. So on the other hand here I can have this F1 bar or rather F1 in this case because it's not complemented as such. What we are getting here is AB dash AC A dash B C dash which is nothing but F1. So we need not invert this function so we can provide 0 as the second input of my XOR and then what comes out is F1 itself which is nothing but this function. So in this manner we have been able to implement both the functions F1 and F2 both the outputs F1 and F2 using the programmable AND as well as programmable OR array which is nothing but the PLA. So that's all with today's video. I hope uh, how to implement a Boolean function using PLAs is clear to you all. So these are the steps involved. The first step being the formation of the PLA programming table wherein we enlist all the product terms, the inputs and the outputs. We fill the input column with the ones for all the product terms where the literal is in its natural form and zeros where it is in the complemented form. After which, we need to frame the AND array wherein we get only the product terms as required. So it is programmable. And from that, we tap out only the product terms and combine them with an OR gate, which is required to frame a particular function. In case the function is in its inverted form when it is coming out from the OR gate, we provide it to an XOR gate as one of the inputs to the XOR gate, wherein the second input of that XOR gate is going to be 1 so that we get the inverted version as required. In that case, since the structure needs to be symmetrical, we are going to have a zero as the second input for the other function, which needs no complementing. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you have any queries, please don't hesitate to post them in the comments.